In a previous video, we spoke about plant growth regulators, specifically growth promoters, auxins, gibberellins and cytokinins. In this video, we'll focus on ethylene, which fits in both growth promoting category and a growth inhibiting category and also abscisic acid, which is the main plant growth inhibitor. First, let's start with ethylene. Now, ethylene is a simple gaseous PGR. Its chemical formula is CH2 double bond CH2. What is the major function of ethylene? You might have seen this in action. Suppose you keep a ripe banana next to an unripe banana. After a few days, you might have noticed the unripe bananas have somehow turned into a ripe banana. Even though these bananas are not attached to the plant, somehow the unripe fruits have turned into a ripe fruit. How was this possible? Well, this is possible because of the action of ethylene. So the ripe fruits release ethylene gas which then diffuses out. The unripe fruits have receptors for this ethylene gas and the ethylene gas then binds to these receptors which causes the unripe fruits to ripen as well. So that is one of the major functions of ethylene which is fruit ripening. Ethylene is also involved in leaf senescence. If you remember from the previous video, senescence is aging of the plant parts. So as the leaf becomes older, the amount of chlorophyll in the leaf decreases and the leaves begins to age and eventually it will fall off. So ethylene promotes the senescence or aging of leaves. Abscission is the term that means falling off of plant parts. So leaf abscission is when the old damaged leaves have to fall off from the plant because now they are no longer photosynthesized and are just a dead weight to the plants. Ethylene also promotes the abscission of leaf from the plants. Ethylene is also involved in germination, seed germination and the growth of the new plant and initiation of flowering. From this itself, you can see why ethylene fits as a plant growth promoter and a plant growth inhibitor. Fruit ripening, seed germination and initiation of flowering are plant growth promoting activities. Leaf senescence and leaf abscission are plant growth inhibiting activities. Because ethylene is a gaseous PGR, there are no different types of ethylene except it is released under specific conditions. One of the conditions is in response to aging, like I just told, it is involved in leaf senescence. Another condition in which ethylene is released is in response to wounds. Say a plant is damaged by a cut or an external wound. If the damaged part is not abscessed or removed from the plant part, that could lead to infections. So ethylene production increases in the damaged part, which rapidly promotes the abscission of the damaged part. Ethylene has a wide variety of uses in the agriculture industry. It is sprayed on fruits to make them ripen faster. While this is beneficial, at the same time, faster ripening of fruits also decreases their shelf life. So to increase the shelf life of fruits, fruits are often sprayed with an inhibitor or blocker of ethylene that inhibits the production of ethylene. And with ethylene production being inhibited, fruits take a longer time to ripen, which increases the shelf life of fruits. With this, we'll move on to our last plant growth regulator, abscisic acid, which I mentioned is a plant growth inhibitor. So abscisic acid, the word is derived from the term abscission, which means falling off of plant parts. So you can guess that the major function of abscisic acid is leaf abscission. It promotes the falling off of old damaged leaves from the plant body. Apart from being involved in the abscission of leaves, abscisic acid is also involved in the closing of stomata. Now why is this important? So here you can see an open stomata and a closed stomata. If you remember from earlier chapters, the stomata is the opening through which transpiration or water loss occurs. Under drought conditions where there is less availability of water, transpiration could further damage the plant. So what happens is under such extreme drought conditions, abscisic acid production increases and it goes and closes the stomata. So with the stomata closed, water loss through transpiration is reduced or can be avoided. Abscisic acid also functions to inhibit the germination of seeds. We just saw in previous videos 
that gibber lens promotes seed germination right well abscisic acid acts in the opposite manner it inhibits seed germination how it does that is by inducing the dormancy of seeds dormancy is the period in which the seed remains a seed it does not germinate usually it is under unfavorable conditions when a seed enters a period of dormancy so abscisic acid makes sure that the seed is dormant until favorable conditions return abscisic acid also inhibits fruit ripening in plants so because of all this you can say that abscisic acid or aba is usually released in response to stress it is a stress hormone and examples of stress conditions include low water availability or drought conditions which leads to stomatal closure high salinity and high temperatures with this we are ending our video series on plant growth regulators can you think of a reason or a condition in which synthetic abscisic acid might be sprayed on plants do you think such conditions could ever emerge think about it